Hi, it's Dirk from Century again. And in this video, we are going to walk through how to assign an issue and how to resolve an issue using GitHub. So this is specific to GitHub issues, uh, not to any other system. We also do this same kind of thing with other issue tracking systems like Jira, but this video is just gonna be focused on GitHub. So let's do something uh, quickly. Let's actually, um, create a new issue and uh, see how this works. So I'll bring up our VS Code environment again, same thing that we were doing before. I've incremented the version. In the last video, if you'll recall, or if you watched it, we did a GitHub Actions uh, workflow that actually creates this um, major min patch release automatically. And this is the latest one that we have. And now uh, we had three errors issued before, and now I'm gonna issue a fourth one. So let's just fire up our dev server, and we'll do that real quick. Send off a new issue. And there we go. So now we should have a new issue to work with here. If we wait for just a second, it should pop up here on our screen. And there we go. So now we have a brand new issue, new issue. Notice based on our previous code owner's assignment that we are getting our auto assignment to Dirk. And uh, if I were to open my email, you would see that that issue has been sent to me to resolve. If we go into this issue now, we've already connected our Git instance, our GitHub instance, and it's down here. And if I want to create an issue for this, now I can just hit the plus sign. And you'll notice it picks up our repo, it picks up our title. We can, of course, make modifications to this if we want to, and then we can auto assign. So this is just gonna pull in whoever the participants are in our GitHub repo. Well, let's say I wanna assign this to George, and we'll go ahead and create that issue. Okay, now the issue's been created, and you can see it right here. All I have to do is click on this issue, and it'll take me there. I'm not gonna do that because it's gonna take us away from Sentry into GitHub. I'm just gonna pivot over here to this tab, and let's come back into our repo, and we'll see this issue. It should be right here. And there's our fourth error, uh, our fourth issue error. Now, we can work with this now within GitHub. If we want to click on this, we can, of course, do our normal labeling or assign it to projects or start writing comments about this issue, etc. Now, one thing that you may wonder is if I were to, say, leave a comment. So I could say, uh, this will be resolved um, in the next release. And if I were to close this issue with a comment, I can either close it as not planned or close with a comment. I can hit this comment and then I can hit close issue. So now it would appear that this has been resolved, but if we go back to Sentry, you'll notice on this issue, if I refresh it, nothing has changed. Now you can see our resolve button normally, if this were resolved, this check mark would be a green mark and we'd probably get a, a line through the issue indicating that it's been resolved. So how do we fix this if, if we wanna actually resolve this issue? Well, you have to do it through a commit message. And the commit message ties directly to what we call a short ID within Sentry. And that short ID is here. You can also get to it from our issues list. So you, you probably will have noticed these little uh, um, project looking tags that are on the issue. These are actually the short ID that will get used in the commit message to resolve this issue. So let's jump back into the issue. I'm gonna grab this message and let's go back to the um, VS Code. And in VS Code, we can stop our dev server and let's just make an innocuous change. It doesn't even need to be anything that truly resolves the issue. Um, I could just make a change to the file just anywhere, just change the address, for example. But let's pretend that I'm actually doing some real work and we're resolving a particular problem within the code. Great, so we've done that. Should get one file here, and we can see that in the command line, we have one file changed. Now this is the important part. If we do this commit message, if you'll recall in our git actions, if we put a hashtag here, it will, uh, we can change this to patch 
major or minor. So if I change it to a patch, then I can also plug in the, and you can kind of see it down here. I've done it in a previous test of this. If I paste in that short ID and now hit commit, next we can do a uh, git push origin and our git action will go ahead and pick all of this up, create a new patch release. It's gonna automate that whole process. And then the next part will resolve the issue. So now if we go back to GitHub, we can see this release being deployed. Let's go back to our repo. We can see if I click on this little indicator, we can see our GitHub actions flow is running. Go back into details real quick. And if I go to summary, we can see the tags have been produced, context has been produced, the GitHub release is happening right now. And then the century release is going to happen here in just a second. And all of this does not need to be done, by the way. Uh, we will pick up that change even if, even if you're not doing a full get actions flow like this. This is just illustrative in the way that we have this environment set up. So let's let this process, it's not really that big a deal. And if I jump back into our issues list, we'll notice that issue is no longer here, it vanished. And why is that? That's because up here we have the resolved filter. So if we switch to, or the unresolved filter, we switch to resolved and I hit this. Now we're gonna see this fourth error and the linkage to our issue page. So this is actually a direct clickable link to that issue that we had in GitHub, but you notice it's completely resolved now because we put that commit message into our push. And now if I click on this, we can see it's been resolved and closed and uh, the various details down here. So closing it within GitHub directly is not going to affect that unless you put that message in a pull request or in a push for code change. And then if we see that, we will resolve it. Hopefully that all made sense and uh, looking forward to talking to you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.